What if they were right? What if the pyramids really are the work of ancient extraterrestrials? And what if those pyramids were nothing more than the tops of their spacecraft? <coughs> I mean, uh, hey guys, welcome back to A Green Skies 2. I'm Brim, he's Grum, and this is episode lucky number 13. Now what are we going to do today? the first thing we need to do in this episode is take a peek around our base. Uh, obviously it has changed quite a bit since we were last together. Uh, I'd also like, where is our book? I'd also like to get our questing book out uh, and take a look at what we've got in there. Now we've done some work, probably the biggest place that we've done work is here on this pad. Uh, this is where we had all of our original layout and storage etc etc and the storage has been moved off to one side. Uh, a couple more better barrels have been built just for convenience. This is really kind of a stopgap between chests, which would fill up pretty quickly, and our ME system. Uh, and we're going to try to do, we've got several, oh, we can take a look right over here. We've got several things that we would like to, oh, we're going to start Batania today. But we've got the infuser, uh, or the exchanger and the infuser. These pads, obviously, let's just go up and look at. So we've got two different pad layouts here. This one I've divided into, we originally talked about having, well, actually what we originally talked about was having this um, kind of dartboard sort of effect where we've got a target sitting in the center. This is nice. I, I like this. And on this one we've used that gray frequency brick, stone brick, along with the edged stone here. So it has a nice little edge around it. And then down here we've got the gray frequency brick and regular stone brick. And this one's laid out in quadrants. I actually think I like the quadrant better. And it um, you, you get a really good feel for it over here in the uh, agricultural, um, I don't know, platform, I suppose, because where the stone brick would be, we've now got our dirt laid out, right? And we've got one of these, only one, this is this is probably coming out. Um, that may be all the nether wart I will ever need right there in that one little section. Now we've also got wood being, um, I guess we could take a look underneath. So what we've got underneath, that was just right to be wrong. Uh, let's come over here and pop a hole in. So if we go underneath, we will see that we have got one of our test rats under here that is receiving energy. If you look at the uh, Wally tooltip at the top there, it is receiving energy and doing nothing else. And then there is a filter on the servo. Get this out of inventory so we can take a look at it. Right here, if I can get to it right there, that is allowing oak saplings and rubber saplings to go through. Now, I originally had oak saplings in here. Uh, we have since changed out to rubber saplings, and I'll show you why if I can get back through the hole. Go ahead and get our blocks replaced. So I let this run for a while, and it's just filling up the chest, and then I come over here manually from time to time and pull out what's in the chest and drop it over here in the barrels, filling these up. But this is the reason I switched over to rubber. We're going to need plastic, um, and we've now got one full chest of oak logs and a stack, almost two stacks here, plus a half a chest, or, or a barrel rather, half a barrel full of saplings. So we've got lots of stuff from oak here. I wanted to go ahead and get started on our plastic so that we can cook that down and make life a little better. So I switched this one back over to, or switched it over to rubber, and it's now running rubber. At some point, we'll switch it over to some other saplings as well, uh, but probably not until we, can, we have a better way of dealing with um, the products that are coming out. And, and again, that will be the ME system. Now, to deal with the fact that the tops of the trees are spawnable, I took, we got as a reward um, a chandelier at one point, and I took that chandelier and just hung it up here. This will prevent mobs from spawning within a 16 block radius, uh, with the pads only being 27. Uh, they're 14, the radius around this is 14, so 16 is actually out here somewhere. So one chandelier sitting in the middle of this should cover the entire radius of this spawning, or, uh, the spawning pad. No, we did not want to make a spawning pad. That's why we got that up there. That should prevent mobs from spawning. Like if this gets broken, that is spawnable. Um, although it doesn't show to be spawnable. Oh, do I not have F7 turn? I don't have F7. Ah, see, as in over here on top of the red mushroom uh, is spawnable, but the the chandelier will prevent that from happening. So that's, that's the, yeah, there it is, spawnable on top of that tree. So that was the purpose of hanging the chandelier here, and that also gave us the ability to create kind of this little structure here in the middle. Um, so let's talk about, uh, we now have, uh, we don't have all, if we go to, if we go to the map, you'll see that we've got all five pads laid out this way, but we've only got three here and four in the middle. We're actually short a couple, so we still need one whole, yeah, we still need one whole roll out here. Um, this is really difficult changing out all of this cobble without some way to do that automatically. And we're going to build an automated way to do that today. We're going to, we're going to build the, um, the exchanger, uh, which will allow us to select a block and then tell it, hey, change out all this cobble for our st stone brick, which will be really nice. It'll help this. Doing these two up here by hand, I, I did these by hand so I could get a feel for what I like. And, and like I said, I think, I think I'm leaning towards this pattern rather than that pattern, although we may leave this one because it is different, right? It is, um, it is the central one. It is the one. Now we're going to put, we're going to put a beacon up here as well and replace 
uh, what would be a beacon base. We're going to replace that with gold up here. So this will eventually all be gold, and there will be a beacon sitting on top right here. Uh, I think that will look really awesome, and it will kind of give that feel of a mystical pyramid of some reason, or of some, sh of some type. Man, I'm a bit tongue-tied tonight. Rather than just a um, stone pyramid. And I will also, I don't like this oak here. This is oak. I don't like the oak. It's not dark enough. May need to come in one, too. Hmm. Hmm, hmm. Make a villager sound there. Probably so. This will probably come in one. But as, when I started building this, and I knew this was the structure I wanted on top, I wanted to mirror the structure underneath, and we'll talk about these here in just a second. As I started building this, I really got this spaceshipy sort of feel, right? I mean, there are those out there who believe that the pyramids were built by extraterrestrials, and that's kind of the way I did the, uh, the little segment before we got started there. There are those who, who legitimately believe that the pyramids were built by extraterrestrials who came here on spaceships. So I kind of ran with that theme, and as I did that, as I built this one, I said, okay, if this is a spaceship, uh, and I will probably take one of the pads, if we have a free pad, and collapse the... Uh, top of like we've got the pyramids on top and just collapse it directly on top of this one uh, directly on top of the pad that's at the bottom so that there is no gap so it looks like it gives the impression that this thing traveled here and then this part rose up to become the roof and these are the supports for that roof so it didn't travel through space open like this it traveled through space in kind of a big diamond shape right uh, and then when it got to its location it opened up and this was you know this is going to be the storage one and, and as i started thinking about the fact that these have got individual purposes i kind of got this um space barge sort of feel, right? So these are individual work platforms. They were space barges, and, and if they're going to be hovering space barges, obviously they need to be tethered to one another. So we've got these tethers, and I really like these. Um, these tethers that I have created here, and you'll see these are attached across, so this would anchor, obviously, the one uh, work barge to another work barge, right? And then we've got the longer ones here attaching to the bottom of the tier that's above it. Uh, part of the reason that I knew we were going to have to have a superstructure underneath was so that we'd have something to tether to here. So I really like this. Uh, hey, let me see if I've got... Did I not put away the rubber? Oh, I brought this over here because I was going to throw it in the furnace to make plastic. Let's just get that started. You go up there. Why did you not go up there? Where did you go? Oh, nope, not fuel. Go up here. All right, so, um, let's see. Do I have any of these made? I probably do. The question would be, what have I done with them? And, you know, that's part of the, pre uh, part of the problem and part of the reason we want to get moving forward with our um, storage system. I am sick and tired of having to hunt for stuff. Uh, let's see, we need nine aluminum, 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 aluminum. Uh, that is invar, aluminum should be right here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And if we take these and blockify them, blockify them, and then put them over here with our uh, saw, then we can cut them into slabs, and then we can then cut the slabs into panels. Now we can turn the panels into covers, but if we stop right there and go this way and turn them into posts, then we get what's in my inventory down here, right here. Now these... Just toss this back over here. Uh, I guess we can just connect. Let's just connect the other side. How's that? We'll go right here. Did we? Uh, we skipped one, right? Did I skip one block? I did. I skipped one block. So what I've done here is I've floated down here, thanks to our shiny new wings, and put in blocks all the way across. Uh, and you can see that if you cover, if you go back over a block, it doubles up in its size. Uh, and we're going to use that to our advantage in just a second. So we just run these across here, and I, I won't do the whole thing. I'll just it goes all the way across. Uh, and we'll talk about that in just a second as well. And then I came back in here and put in these are micro blocks, uh, which is what the saw is for. Uh, and then I realized, hey, if I just double this one up, it begins to look like an anchor point. Double up. It begins to look like an anchor point, and it fills in that hole perfectly. So I just took these, and I ran them uh, across here, and then made the same shape on the other side. So they look like big, heavy anchors of some sort with this uh, metal rope, or thanks to the texture of the aluminum, it kind of looks like metal cabling of some sort. And I thought that was, I thought that was very pleasing. Uh, we finally got to a point where we can start doing some things that are aesthetically pleasing. Uh, we're not just fighting for our life all the time. So uh, this will probably end up being particularly out on the other pads. Uh, we'll probably end up being the pattern that we go with. Uh, still haven't decided whether or not we're going to use the regular stone brick or the edge stone brick, but before we get any of that, uh, I absolutely want to go work through our crafting grid that's over here, and um, so that we've got the machines that we need. Uh, I don't need those. And then um, I'll show you how the resonant exchanger works. Uh, hey, hello, Missy L. Squid. I'm, I'm getting ready to tear all that down, um, and you may be wondering where I'm going to get squid from at that point. I, I did capture a squid in a safari net, and our safari net collection is coming along. We have squid right here, and we can always just throw that into a auto spawner and spawn a bunch of squid right out on the ground, and of course they will immediately die, and we can collect their goods. So um, part of what we want to get done today, if we take a look at our quests, we do not have, where is... Uh, Applied Engineering. We don't have any quests available in Applied en Engineering. Now, that is probably because we have not done a whole lot in Assembly Line. Um, this is still not Assembly Line. I'm sorry. Storage Wars. We've done a few things here, but we still got a lot of quests to do. So a lot of what's over here is a, um, Storage War qu uh, quest stuff just so that we can get it knocked out and see if we can unlock the AE stuff. So um, this is supposedly how we unlock 
down here for the hoarding. Oh, yep, sure enough, it did it. Uh, what do they want? 500 buckets of chocolate milk. Yeah. Uh, B DNA. 500 buckets of B DNA. So, yeah, that did unlock uh, for the hoarding, but we ain't ready to start that. Now, let's make sure it did unlock anything else. We still have power grid locked, which is kind of crazy. I'm not sure what unlocks that. I'm going to have to do some research. Uh, but the one we're most interested in right now is botanical engineering. And we have a quest available here. Make botanical seeds. We need puzzle, and we can just run over and grab that. As well as we need to get um, our AE system up and running. And we still have nothing there. So we're going to run through. Uh, we've done this grid together. This is a leadstone uh, flux capacitor. Basically to make the next capacitor up. To make the next capacitor up. Uh, one more. We're just working through the grid here. And this... Uh, oh, what was supposed to be in the top? Whatever it was it was supposed to be in the top. Was this supposed to be our exchanger? I bet this was supposed to be the exchanger itself. Err, that's a fail. Uh, machine frame. Battery, which probably means this is the infuser, which we use to, uh, the energetic infuser, which we actually use to charge that. I can't believe I didn't put this stuff up here. Obviously, I got sidetracked and did not finish that. Uh, here's a portable tank. That is one of the items in the quest line for storage. Here is a brick well. Now, I really like this, and this will end up wherever our Britannia stuff is at. Um, this thing, like that. This thing uh, is an infinite water source in a single block. Now, the one thing I don't like about it, you will see if you're watching closely. Here, let me just dump this over here. Oh, here's something else I did aesthetically. I just built a little uh, pagoda sort of thing over here. Is that the right word? Pagoda? Hmm, I don't know. Uh, you will notice that my bucket jumps around when I fill it. I don't like that about the well. Uh, there's something else that we were using the other day, I don't remember what it was, that has a similar effect. I don't like it at all. I don't like that my bucket moves around my inventory because generally I'm trying to, you know, click it, click it, click it, click it. And when if, if my bucket's shifting around, that's really annoying. But anyway, we need to build this. It will end up over at our uh, Petania area because we constantly need water over there uh, to fill up our um, uh, pedestal, pedal, pedal apothecary, pedal apothecary. All right, so we did that one. Uh, we did the tank. We did whatever was there. Here's three uh, factory machine blocks to make. Hmm, I'm guessing the um, plastic tank. Plastic tank was also something we needed for quests. Here's a gray bag, um, and I think the reward for that is a different kind of gray bag. Uh, here's the builder, and that's we finally have enough materials that we can use the builder, but I still think the, that the um, mod is busted, and you cannot move the chests around with a dolly. So as nice as these chests are, we may not be able to use them. We'll just have to see. Uh, what are we making here? We're making, we've, we've got two, which probably means there's one up here, which probably means we were making a three. Yeah, look at that. Mm-hmm. Um, storage drawers. So this is more, this is a whole series of storage drawers they want, storage drawers, storage drawers they wanted built um, for a particular quest, and it's every one of them. It's it's the entire series from the largest one that holds uh, one item all the way down to the one that holds um, two stacks per drawer, and I think it's eight items maybe. Um, I don't know, I don't use them very often. Filing cabinet is also in storage wars, so most of this stuff is all storage wars. The tool rack, um, all right, this is something different. So those were gravel bricks. That was four gravel, which makes gravel bricks. And then you can take the gravel bricks and put them in with um, stone uh, brick slabs, and you can make gravel brick road, or gravel road, I guess. Um, that is what we saw up there, and I'll, I'll, we'll go back up there. Uh, we also made some sandy glass. Do I have room? Just barely. And some blackout curtains, and now I do not have room. We'll toss those down for now um, so that we could make um, dark glass. Now, dark glass has the unique property of being see-through but not allowing light through. Um, now I did put a, we didn't make much of that, made what, uh, 12? Where'd they go? 15. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and this would have been the 15th block, but we'll take it just like that. No, no not in there. Uh, will that still open? It will still open. Good. That being a glass, I just want to make sure it acted like normal glass. And what we will see is, when we turn off the light, that even though um, there's glass here and we can see in, that it, it doesn't count as being lit up. So we can see in and see what's going on. And obviously, this is much more attractive than staring at cobble, right? So um, this gives us the option to put some glass on our mob grinders and such to be able to see in uh, and still have them dark where they can be mob spawners. So we'll toss this piece over here because we didn't actually need that for quest. Uh, was that everything over here in the stack? That was everything over here in the stack. Okay, here's what I'm going to do. We know we missed. We, ha, ha I missed right here. So I'm going to grab this stuff to build the exchanger, because that is something we want to look at. I'm going to clean up my inventory again real quick. Um, you know, we should... Let's go ahead and pop this bad boy open in case some of this stuff has to be in our inventory. Uh, except we have no room to receive rewards. So let's put away... Uh, let me just do that up here. It's kind of where blocks that I'm using for building have ended up at. All right, so let's take a look. Storage war should now... Yep, nine quests complete. Yep, mm-hmm. So this one will get us the iron bars, and iron bars is what you have to build to make 
the compact chests. We also did the filing cabinet, so we'll get three more of those. Now, I do want to make sure we don't run out of inventory space. I did go back and review the video. We did lose um, Ardite, Cobalt, and Mandulum. Uh, no, just the Ardite and Cobalt. Ar Ardite and Cobalt ingots the last time we did one of these big, collect a bunch of rewards all at once. So that's no fun at all. And this one's going to give us a brown bag. I have no idea what these bags do. Uh, I guess we'll see at some point. Here are the all the drawers that needed to be made. And I knew this one was going to unlock the tool storage. So I went ahead and built that one. What's this? Do we have room? Yes, we got one more room. Purple Heart Clock. Okay, sure. Why not? We'll toss some of this stuff up here, particularly these, now that we've got them claimed. We'll toss those up here as well. Let's see what else we've got. Quest Quest, we did this one, and that's going to give us an MK, uh, a structural upgrade MK2. Now, we built an MK4 a while ago to unlock for the hoarding, so kind of ahead on the game there. And what we got up here? The Water Well. Claim that reward. Make sure that we're still good with our inventory. We are. The portable Tank, which is going to give us Sausage and Bread. Okay. Cool, why not? And the plastic tank, claim that reward. Now, we are down to, um, that. Those these backpacks are really nice in a world not like this one where we're actually doing some mining and stuff. I don't know how valuable they're going to be in this world, but we'll take a look. Um, I haven't built these, I don't know what that is. Specialized upgrades, unlocks one quest elsewhere. Okay, this might be the one we need, and if, um, if AE is not available now, it's still not available. So let me clean up my inventory, let me um, get the stuff we need to finish the exchanger, and we'll grab the stuff necessary to build whatever that was, and we'll see if that unlocks uh, our quest, and then we'll come back and get move, at least get started with Batania. I'm thinking we're probably going to put Batania maybe up here in this middle level. Maybe this will be where our magical stuff is. I haven't decided yet, but we'll, we'll pick a place for it and get started on that in just a second. Let me make a quick cut, and I'll be right back. Okay, guys, welcome back. Uh, as you can see, I've broke down most of our crafting grid. I did get our exchanger up here. Uh, everything other than the flux capacitor we've built before. It's a tesserat, a couple of uh, enderium ingots, and an eye of ender. And we're going to go ahead and toss this. I stuck the infuser. Our uh, our machine area is really a mess, but it's going to remain a mess until we can get uh, a couple of things done. So we're going to go ahead and let that start charging up. And it's going to get to 10 million. So it's going to be there for just a little while. So we'll leave that running. And then I noticed when I was looking at our book that there are a couple of things. Oh, well, for starters, we said we were going to grab this thing. There's the void frame to go on a barrel. Uh, and I said when we were looking here earlier that we could just go grab Podzul, and I didn't explain myself. So let me explain myself. We have been running um, the tree farm down there, and you can see that there's a black and white barrel on top of the tree farm. That is, uh, what's this stuff called? Uh, it's the waste product, um, sludge. It, that is the sludge that comes out of the harvester, and it goes into a drum. And, the, and I've got a couple of drums stored up here. There's two drums stored right there. And this is a uh, mob essence that has come out of our mob trap. We'll, we'll hang on to every bit of this. Eventually, we'll probably be storing this in a bedrockium drum. Uh, we just aren't there yet. So here is our sludge. If we run sludge through a boiler, through a sludge boiler, it creates items. And I have done that with um, some. When we had it set back over here, uh, we had a sludge boiler hooked up directly, and it was making items. The problem is every time I walked past it, it poisoned me. So I eventually shut it down. But I'm pretty sure the contents from that are right here. And yes, we actually have a podzool in here. So that should fulfill this quest and get us our start on Batania, which is really, really helpful. Now, what did this... Well, that's actually a seed, which means we're going to have to plant that just like we did crops. Matter of fact, let's just verify that by running down here. Uh, we can take out sugar cane. Let's see if we plant that white seed in there. No. Okay. So does it plant normally? No. Hmm. So how do we use, um, maybe the book will say, uh, if you said puzzle, collect seeds, or grow mystical flowers, puzzle can be crafted. Any RSPs or tasks wants us to do this. It doesn't really tell us what to do with the mystical white flower seeds. We can't plant them in the ground. It doesn't look like we can put them in a, in a, uh, doesn't look like we can put them in crop sticks, so we'll have to figure it out um, as we move forward. But let's, for now, let's stick our sugar cane seeds back in there. And then we, ha we had a couple of other quests that were just kind of hanging out out there. I noticed when we were in our book that we had not yet unlocked Power Grid. Oh, where's Power Grid? Power Grid's still locked. I'm pretty sure that's going to be unlocked up here. Uh, and the logical place for that to be unlocked, there is a power drive that unlocks five quests elsewhere. So I'm guessing that's right here. So I went ahead. Uh, what do we have here? This is Power Grid right here. This is to create the... Uh, stone generator. Uh, let's see if we claim. Oh, there's more stuff down here. Oh, but we've already done it. So we'll claim that one. And let's see if that unlocked. Yeah, that unlocked power grid. Uh, survival generator. That's going to be a culinary generator. This is all wind turbines, solar power. Ugh, this is. Uh, these are things we can knock out pretty quickly. We won't do them today, obviously. Uh, and I took a look at our time. We're actually um, really late on our time. Uh, so we need to move forward here pretty quickly. 
uh, one of the sky block we've got a couple other items we'll go ahead and claim this one for sure Ooh, and that's a reward bag let's make sure we've got room we do uh, why do I keep escaping out of that book and closing it uh, all right so we have a couple of frames here that they want us to build the void frame and the item frame and that was to complete this quest that we oh, that unlocks something auto processor which we've already got uh, that unlocks uh, these were frames that were left over. We built a frame way back, the crafting frame, I'm pretty sure, uh, but we never built these two. Uh, we'll just finish that one up because we had started and not finished it. We'll go ahead and claim this one. Oh, a dragon fruit sapling. We'll go ahead and claim this one because we can make sure we've got room in our inventory. We do not have enough room, but we have iron right here, so we can create that room pretty quickly. Toss this stuff in here. Matter of fact, we can toss these two in here as well. Claim those. We'll always take extra gears. Throw those in there. All right, now, back out here. Uh, ba -dum -ba -dum. I think I set up to make the Angry Doll, which will allow us to collect this one as well. Now, let's see if we haven't unlocked some other things. Importantly, Applied Engineering. Oh, still nothing in Applied Engineering. I've got to go figure out how to get past that. That is a real hindrance in not being able to move forward there. Um, it's just kind of irritating. So, we did get, uh, we now have everything unlocked, I think, except for anything beyond the first quest there so let's take a break here and i know we just took a break but let's take a break here uh did we get everything we did those we did that i, I slapped the builder down here for the compact chest stuff let me sleep and we'll get set up I'll, I'll figure out how to plant that seed figure out what i need to do with that seed and maybe it has to be planted on puzzle you know we could just go uh uses uh so the this has to be planted over puzzle so i'm betting yeah, it has to be planted in Podzil. So let's figure out how to make Podzil real quickly because we will not be able to progress without petals. So this may have to get put on hold for today. Podzil is going to be spruce leaves, which we have not grown any spruce yet, surrounding dirt. So we will absolutely have to put this on hold, which really kind of stinks. Uh, the good news is we do have plenty of dirt these days. Yep, dirt's coming along. So let's toss these. Uh, we'll toss them in here with the other precious stuff. Uh, all right, guys, we are really long on time today. Anyway, I did not expect to, to spend an entire episode doing crafting stuff, but by the time we did the kind of the tour of the base, and it is episode 13, I, I tend to avoid doing anything really big. Uh, here was the road we talked about earlier. We actually built some of this. Do I still have it in my inventory? I do. Um, I tend to avoid doing anything significant, and I, I, no, I'm not superstitious at all. Uh, but people will comment saying, if I make a mistake of some sort, they'll comment saying, oh, it's because you did it in episode 13. And eh, I don't buy that at all, but I'd rather avoid the comments, so... I just normally try to avoid doing big builds. I was going to go outside of that this time around and do the uh, Batania build. But guess what? 13 jumped up and bit me. And I don't have the stuff I need to get started in Batania. So uh, we'll get that started. Um, let me figure out how to make Podzil so we can... Oh, we just did that. Let me... Let me... Okay, let me take a break and see what else we can get accomplished in the next couple of minutes. And then we'll come right back. All right, guys. Well, it wasn't going long at all because it turns out I'm a complete edge. How do you like that? Uh, so if we look in here... Uh, this is our... A clipboard that we made. Uh, we just made the exchanger. We've made the infuser. We have not yet figured out how to do this. Uh, and we've done the hoarding quest. And then I realized, hey, I never claimed. I went to look to see what else we could, what rewards we could claim. I never claimed the one that I thought might actually unlock uh, the more storage stuff. So let's claim this and go see if that got us to. Uh, where am I looking for? It's always further down than I expected to be. Come on, baby. Be there. Be there. No. No. Why? Why? Why won't you unlock? All right. Let's. Uh, unfortunately, we are out of time. Um, is there anything else here we can do? We do need to open our reward bag. We do have a couple of things that we can do. What is this? A raw meat block. Sounds yummy. Not. So let's take a look and see what else we can claim. We should have some unclaimed rewards. We've got three. They're probably all Mob Hunter. And they are indeed. So we'll claim those. And um, I guess we'll call this an episode. Let's, let's go ahead and pick and get down. Do I have the... I do have this with me. Oh, I'm sure we just lost stuff. You know how I think, I'm sure we just lost stuff? Because... Once again, my inventory is completely full. So let's uh, let's pick. I think I think we're going to use this pad right here. I think this is going to become Batania pad right here. Boom. You are now the Batania pad. Oh, and before we call it an episode, I want to grab the... We made the exchanger, and it is now charged. We will need to create just a little bit of space in our inventory. Put that up here. Uh, I guess we can put the wrong meat block up there. We've got one that's got nothing but machines and stuff in it, so we'll toss this stuff, although it seems to be collecting decorative blocks now as well, which is actually what I wanted to grab. So, let's just do this now. Uh, do I have any of the colored blocks right now? Let's see. Uh, a few. A very, 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 very few. So, I'll, I'll show you how this works real quick. It's actually pretty cool. So, if we hold um, if we hold shift and click on a block, you'll see that it gets set. It says, I have 19 of those blocks, and my current radius is 3. Well... I don't want radius 3, as we can see that's huge. But I can do the page up and page down keys, and I can reduce that in size. Well, all of this happens to be built 
on a size on, on a, a three scale. So if I come over here now and I click this, it will simply replace the blocks that were here with the blocks from my inventory. And they go directly in my inventory and, the, and directly out of my inventory. And you'll see I only had one of those blocks left, so it only replaced the middle block. However, I can now come down here. Uh, so the next block we want to use is this block, which we have 64 of in our inventory. So if we come in three for the pad, or for the uh, border, one, two, three, then right here would be the next one. And we go three, three, and three, and that's a nine wide pad, which should line us up directly with the crosswalk, which it does. So three, and three, and three, and three, and of course nine by nine is 81, so I don't have enough of those to do an entire section either. But you see how the exchanger works, and the really cool thing is that the blocks don't actually break. You'll see that I placed underneath torches, and the torches didn't pop. They don't actually break, uh, so they don't fall, and they go directly in and out of my inventory. So I can come down here and do this from the bottom and without having to worry about losing blocks. Uh, it takes the cobble out and puts it back in my inventory, so it literally just exchanges the blocks from their current location with my inventory, which is very handy when trying to do one of the... I did this one and that one by hand. It was horrible. Absolutely horrible. I don't want to do that again. Never again. Well, okay. Maybe at some point again. I don't want to do that again on these pads, that's for sure. So that's the reason we built Exchanger. Um, obviously, it costs power to it costs power to do that exchange. Um, didn't use that much, I suppose. Uh, maybe half a million RF to do the blocks. So probably, probably one of these pads will cost us an entire charge, I, I would guess. Probably so, yeah. So, uh, guys, I, I we picked our spot for Batania. We didn't make it very far because we got to build Podzil. We figured out how to do that, but we don't have the leaves necessary to do that. So I'll get started. I'll change out our rubber um, trees down here. We should have more than enough rubber for now. I'll change out our rubber trees. Let's see how we do it. Yeah, see, just in the time that we've been recording here, we've collected several stacks of rubber and rubber trees. So I'll go ahead and change these out and get in our spruce tree. I'm 90% certain that we have a spruce sapling. Let me come check. Spruce sapling would have been like right here. Spruce, jungle, birch, spruce. We do have a spruce sapling. So we might actually manually grow this and use, we still have a crook here. Manually use a crook so that, matter of fact, let's just do that. Because obviously if we don't get a sapling, we're done. Um, we're done with that. We'll have to figure out how to, I'm sure there's a way to make a spruce sapling. Excuse me. I'm sure there's a way to make a spruce sapling. Uh, I don't know what that is off the top of my head. We're going to have to ditch some blocks too. Actually, we can just, uh, we've got cobble now, so we can ditch those. Yay. And we can put our... Eh, you're back up there with a whole bunch of things checked off. Nice. So let's go ahead and grow him up real quick. Now, conveniently, we can fly. I believe I can fly. Okay. No, 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 no singing. No singing. Uh, you guys don't want to listen to me sing, and, and I don't really have any interest in singing, so. See, please, we just, is everybody begging for saplings? I know I'm begging for saplings. Oh, really? 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 But we did get a sapling, so that's good. Uh, we can build this out of this, and it will last longer at least. Get you back over here. Ah. Put that in there. Put these back up here. Go finish knocking this down. Hoping for saplings. It's been a while since we've been in a position where we just had our fingers and toes crossed hoping for saplings, because... At least we got one, so we know that we can... Wow, have we, have we seen another one? We have not yet seen another one. ZC's not good. We need at least one more. Come on. Be nice to us. I can't, uh, because I tell it not to consume stack, I can't even go put it in the automated farm out there until I've got at least two. Uh, and, of course, it doesn't get the bonus from the crook. Uh, we're up to three now. That's good. Uh, and if we're going to be making Podzil this way, you know, it might benefit us. Hmm, I'll tell you what. I'm going to set the... Let's just do that real quick together. This won't take but just a second. Let's grab... Now we should have enough white space. Let's grab our sledge boiler, which should be right here. Where are our, what do we do with all of our... Um, oh, here we go. Sledge boiler. Where are you at? Sledge boiler. And we can grab a battery. We should have one charging over there. Here is this. And where is... That's... We need a uh, fluid duct. Yes, we do. And we need a battery. We'll just toss that in for, oh, this is getting so cluttered. I'm going to stop doing it. I'm going to have to stop doing it. Stop cluttering up your inventory. We'll grab this. Get, get in my inventory. Now, we do want to set him uh, a little bit further away than I did the last time, because that was unpleasant. All right, let's see. We need our battery first. Where did the battery go? There he is. We need to put our battery down, and we can put our sledge boiler directly on top of the battery. Yep. Uh, we're going to need a couple of chests, which we should have the recipe already set up in here. Chest, recipe, chest. Pull out two chests, please. Take them back over here. Okay, he's got um, he's got power. He's got an output. He just needs input, which means he needs a barrel. And we just happen to have a couple of full barrels of sludge right up here. Now, we do need to proceed with the... Um, well, you can come off that way you will. Nice. So the wrench does work on the barrels. That's very handy. Um, we do need spruce. I, I like the, the look of spruce. Obviously, that... I mean, imagine that wood 
I'm placing that oak up there. I think it would look a much better contrast with the um, sandstone than the oak that's up there. So uh, we will definitely want to get those growing in the farm probably next. So let's change these out. Real <clears throat> Not that. Change that out with this real quick. Put that there. Throw our barrel on top barrel on top. Now before we add the servo, we want to make sure this bad boy is, no, it's not. Powering out the top, then put the servo on and back away. You are on. Go. Alright. So we now see the particle effect, and if we were a little closer, we'd be getting poisoned, but we don't really want to get poisoned. And that was the reason I had to move it originally. Um, I think it's like a six block radius. One, two, three, four. Well, no, I'm sitting at five blocks here. What if I move one closer? Hmm. One, two, three. I'm in the fourth block. About three blocks. One, two, oh, yeah, I'm poisoned. So it's got a three block radius, which happened to be exactly how far it was from this, because we just had the pad in the middle, or the path in the middle. And it was poisoning me every time I walked over here to check on the uh, mob spawner room. It was poisoning me, which I didn't appreciate. So uh, that's the reason we ended up moving it. But as you can see, it's already creating items. There's some dirt, some sand, uh, some heat, sand, and clay. And this is, uh, I actually pulled the clay out of there to make some things, uh, bricks and such. So this, I guess this is coarse dirt, yeah, because there's regular dirt. All right, we'll just let that run and clean. We need the barrels cleaned up anyway. Uh, as you can see, it's already run through, what, about 20 buckets uh, worth of sludge, and it's creating items just to get There's some peat to go in the peat-fired uh, engine, which we will probably never use. So, uh, guys, we're, we're now long, and we didn't accomplish the things I wanted to, but we did accomplish some important things. So, uh, I appreciate it, and I look forward to seeing you next time.